Dioxins are highly toxic chlorinated organic compounds. They're found in the manufacture of herbicides. They're found in the manufacture or the bleaching process of pulp and paper. They're found in anywhere where combustion occurs. And in fact, they're even found in residues of forest fires. Dioxins are very fat soluble. Because they're fat soluble, that means that they are carcinogenic to us humans. Uh, the, the most toxic form of dioxins will always have a 2378 position. So in any of the methods, when you see dioxins, it's going to be the 2378 positions that are regulated. There's another similar compound to dioxins, very similar in fact, in structure, that's also in the method, and those are called the furans. Those will also have the 2378 positions for the regulated ones. So any two, three, seven, eight position of the dioxins or two, three, seven, eight position of the furans is going to be in the methods. Dioxins are also very similar to PCBs. Most of us have heard about PCBs. They're very similar in structure. structure. PCBs are very toxic. Dioxins are even more toxic than the PCBs. The EPA approved method for dioxin in wastewater and in drinking water even is EPA method 1613B. There's a very similar method in solid waste, which is called EPA method 8290. Both of them are GCMS with high resolution mass spectrometry detection. The approved methods, method 1613B, and method 8290 in the SW846 manual, both require high resolution mass spectrometry. This is a very expensive piece of equipment. It requires a lot of labor. You have to know, you have to really, really know what you're doing. So you need an experienced analyst. The maintenance is quite high and the, the instruments are just really not that available anymore. It's a magnetic sector instrument and there's not really very many manu manufacturers that make this. So we need a new method that does not require that you have a high resolution mass spectrometry to make the method a little bit more affordable for the rest of us. PACE 16130-SSI is an alternative test procedure developed in collaboration between EPA, Shimazu Scientific Instruments, and PACE Analytical Services. This method is an alternative test procedure for method 1613B that enables you to analyze four dioxins and furans using GCMSMS or triple quadrupole GCMS instead of the GC high resolution that's specified in method 1613B. In our collaboration study and development of the method, we proved to EPA that the method is equally effective to method 1613B. In other words, it's gonna get you the same answer that you would get on the GCMS with high resolution. An ATP or alternative to test procedure is a way that a company like Shimazu can introduce new technology into a method. There's two choices in an ATP. One is that you change the extraction and keep the detector exactly the same. The other choice is that you change the detector and keep the extraction exactly the same. For our ATP, the PACE 16130-SSI, we kept all the extraction exactly the same, and the only thing that changes in the method is the detector. In this case, we changed the detector from high resolution mass spectrometry to triple quadrupole mass spectrometry. The PACE 1613-0-SSI alternative to test procedure for dioxins and furans uses and was validated on the Shimazu GCMS TQ8050NX. As we mentioned before, the only real difference between the approved method and the ATP is the detector. In the approved method, you use a high resolution mass spectrometer, which looks for very absolute accurate mass. In the GCMSMS or triple quad method or detector, you're looking for MRM transitions. 
Another thing in the method that had to change is this concept of lock mass. The high resolution method requires this lock mass to make sure that the mass stays in a certain spot. That's not really necessary for a GCM SMS method. However, we had to include it because it's required by the method. So what we did is we did a concept of bleeding in the PFTPA as you're running the instrument so that we could monitor PFTBA instead of monitoring the lock mass compound as in the approved method. For the validation of PACE 1613 0 SSI, we did multiple calibrations over multiple days. We analyzed or checked for sensitivity, verified detection limits, verified that all the 2C criteria such as LCMSs or IPRs and ongoing precision re and recovery passed. We compared everything that would be in the high res method that would be necessary to check for the QC of the method with the GCM SMS or the, low, the triple quad method to make sure that everything passed. So the validation essentially takes the, the extraction and all the tests that you would do for the high resolution method and we compare those to the GCM SMS method, making sure that everything's the same. This validation took place over a period of about nine months. We did a whole bunch of ruggedness testing and verified that the instrument performance of the triple quadrupole instrument and the high res instrument were essentially the same. In method 1613B, there's a requirement to check the lowest calibration standard, also called CS1, for its signal to noise ratio. The required signal to noise ratio of, of the 2378 tetrachlorodibenzodioxin is about 10 to 1. When we analyzed the CS1 by the triple quadrupole uh, detector, we found that the signal to noise ratio for the 2378 tetrachlorodibenzodioxin was much, much higher, more like 100 or 200 times every single time we ran it, which was multiples of multiples of times. Not only that, all the other dioxin compounds that are regulated had extremely high signal to noise ratios. So basically the sensitivity of the triple quadrupole instrument compared to the sensitivity of the high res instrument is much, much, much more more sensitivity that you're going to get with the new ATP or the triple quadrupole method. Besides this increase in sensitivity that we just mentioned as an advantage of triple quadrupole instruments over the high res instruments, there's also the cost benefit. A high res instrument is very expensive. Besides the fact that you would need a very experienced analyst, the maintenance is also very high and there's not really very many suppliers of high-res instruments, making them harder to get and harder to get parts to maintain them. A triple quad instrument, on the other hand, is a much less expensive instrument for you to buy, much less expensive instrument for you to maintain, and the, and the, the software or the, the data that you get out is much easier to interpret so that other people or not, not so necessarily experienced analysts would be able to run samples and be able to interpret the data. And then of course, another huge benefit for having a triple quad ATP method out there at, approved at 40 CFR part 136 is that this is going to be the first triple quad method approved, meaning that eventually we're gonna have more and more and more triple quad methods showing up as EPA approved methods. Shimazu can offer you the exact same instrument that was used to validate the method, the Shimazu GCMS TQ8050NX. Not only that, you will get the exact method that was used when we validated the method, meaning that you will be able to install your instrument in your lab and get running really, really quick. Also, as we mentioned earlier, there's a PFTBA bleed that replaces the lock mass that's required by method 1613B. Our instrument is fully capable of, capable of doing this PFTBA bleed without any additional hardware.
excellence in science. Shimazu.